Hola, bienvenidos a mi canal. I am here today with my good friend Rogelio. He's from Mexico, he's 24 years old, and when we first met, I was just learning Spanish, he was just learning English, and ever since then, our relationship has been me talking to him in Spanish and him responding in English, and I think we've helped each other a lot in the language learning process. So today, he wanted to give you some of his tips on how he learned English. Welcome, Rogelio. Thank you so much for being here. Hi, Camille. I'm so excited to be here. Thank you for the invitation. Yes, so fun. So tell me, Rogelio, how have you learned English? Oh, wow. Well, it's a funny story, you know. Uh, as, you, as you already said, uh, when we first met, we didn't know any, I mean, I didn't know any English, you didn't know any Spanish, or at least very little. Yeah. So it was so funny because I remember we were trying to communicate by doing, you know, by acting out and by doing some mimics. Yes, <laughs> which that is a great way to get your point across, using your hands, using your body. Yeah, Yeah, it is actually. Yeah, it helped us a lot at that time. Uh -huh. Thankfully, thankfully now we can communicate in our in our yes. respective languages. Yes. Uh, but how I learned? Well, let me tell you that when when I was younger, you know, when I was in, studying at high school, I received some classes. I, you know, in Mexico, it's common to receive some English classes, but you know, we didn't we didn't go out of the basics. Right? Yeah. We didn't learn like other than the verb to be or stuff like that. Uh -huh. so, so to be honest, at that time, I wasn't very interested in learning English. Yeah. So I really, I really, I didn't think uh, it would be helpful. But when I met you, when I met you, when I met Calvin, um, I think that was the encouragement I needed to learn. Wow. That's yeah, amazing. because because I finally found a, a use, a usage for, for English. Mm -hmm. And I and I got really into it, and I said, "Yeah, I want to communicate well with these guys." Yeah. So when I met you, I remember I, I started studying like intentionally. I started like uh, looking looking for some means to learn. And I remember I was watching some videos in English. I was reading some stuff. Mm -hmm. And yeah, basically that is basically how I learned. And maybe something that helped me a lot too was. Um, an internship that I did in 2015 when I went to Fresno, California. Mm -hmm. I lived there for six months and, you know, I'm getting involved there in the culture with everybody speaking English to me. I think that was uh, something that was pushing me, yeah. you know, because I didn't have any option, you know, I, I just had to learn or to learn. Yeah, yeah, so, full immersion, ready or not. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. So yeah. that's that's pretty much what I learned, you know, by myself, uh, trying to find some some ways, and also by getting involved, uh, you know, mm -hmm. uh, getting to know other people from other countries, especially from the states. Yeah, that's amazing, Rogelio. Your English is so good now. Um, I wanted to ask you. You are an English teacher, and how yeah. important do you think it is for people to go to school to learn English versus studying on their own? I would say both ways are important. Both ways are like, good enough to learn, I think. Mm -hmm. um, from my experience, I would say it's never, late, it's never too late to start learning, you know? Uh, I mm -hmm. think if you're really interested on, on learning uh, this language, you can just uh, try to find some ways that, you know, on your internet you can find so many things you can use yeah. in order to learn. Uh, there are some podcasts in Spotify you can you can listen to. There are some other video, sorry, sorry. There are some other YouTube videos also, mm -hmm. and audiobooks and so many stuff that you can download for free. Yeah, I agree. So that would be yeah. that would be a good start. I think that would be a good start. And if you decide to study English at a school or maybe to hire a particular teacher or something, I think that would that would be very helpful too. Mm -hmm. But if you if you like. Do these two things at a time i think that would be even greater mm -hmm. yeah for sure i agree there are so many good resources free resources out there right now on the internet um it takes motivation it takes discipline to go after those things oh yeah but it's definitely possible you know to have all the information that you have in your head you know to just try to move it on your mouth or something mm -hmm. uh, because sometimes we're just uh, all the information gets stuck here you know 
for sure. And I think, um, yeah, if you can find some friends, um, you can, you, you have some um, relatives that live in another country, maybe. Mm -hmm. Actually, I remember that you have an app, right? I remember yeah. that you use an app to, yeah. to, to keep in touch with people. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of success with Hello Talk, and then I recently signed up on an app just to kind of compare and see the difference called Tandem. And so I found yeah. a lot of native people on both of those apps. So that's been great. Yeah, so you can just uh, hang out with people from all over the world. And and, and I think uh, something that is very important to do while we are practicing is to find someone that has a better English level than yours. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, probably if you try to speak with a friend of yours that speaks in the same level as, as yours, Mm -hmm. uh, it would be very helpful or you wouldn't progress that much be harder for you to progress think. yeah exactly. i would agree mm -hmm. yeah so if you have a chance to speak to native people i think that would be the best yeah yeah i agree for sure natives are an amazing resource <laughs> definitely uh -huh. i love to ask people about funny stories or miscommunications they've had in their language learning journey because I feel like it's so common. You know my shrimp story, what happened in Mexico. Um, <laughs> what about you, Rogelio? Have you had any <laughs> language story fails or funny stories? Oh, wow. <laughs> yes, yes, I might have some. Yeah, you know, I remember one. I remember one that I had when, when I went to the States. I remember I was painting a wall or I was about to paint a wall, something like that. And, and there was there was a guy next to me, and he asked me about the color. I mean, he asked me what color I, I, I was going to paint the wall. And, well, let me tell you that here there is a, there is a problem in, in my case because, because of my accent. You know, we have a Mexican accent. And Mexicans pronounce the letter Y mm -hmm. as we pronounce letter J in English. Yes. Yeah. So, for example, we, we pronounce, uh, for example, Majo or Junque or... Jojo, stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. So, so our, our pronunciation is a little different from the way you pronounce letter Y in English. Anyways, uh, th this guy asked me about the color of the wall, and and I and I told him, oh yeah, I'm gonna paint it yellow. And and this guy didn't understand me, so he said, what? What, what kind of color is that? You know? And, oh, I, and I was like, no. yellow, you know, <laughs> yellow, the, one of the primary colors. But he didn't understand. So then when I showed the color and he said, oh, yellow. Yes, because jello is also the little food that kids eat, jello. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yes. exactly. So yeah, that, that's why it was very strange for him to listen to a jello color. Like, what kind of color is that? That's amazing. Yeah. So I realized how important it is to pronounce well, you know, those kind of details. Yes, yes, they're important. <laughs> Pronunciation is important, but at least he was able to understand you at the end of the day. He understood. Yeah, <laughs> it was funny though. It was really yeah, funny. for sure. Are you going to learn another language? Well, to be honest, maybe I, I don't really feel like the necessity of learning another language right now. Uh, I still don't, don't feel like I'm master in English right now. <laughs> Whatever. But... <laughs> But, you know, if I had to choose, if I had to choose, I think I would choose um, to learn Italian. Yes, Italian's a beautiful language. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I think Italian is a good option because it is not very different from Spanish. I think it, it wouldn't be that difficult to learn it. It's true. I think you would pick up on it pretty quickly. Yeah. And, and I have people like you that can help me practice. So Yes, we can possiamo parlare in italiano. <laughs> Whatever you said, I think we, <laughs> we can that. speak in Italian. <laughs> yes. So maybe maybe Italian would be an option. Uh, it's not. It's not. To be honest with you, it's not like my plan right now. Mm -hmm. But maybe in a middle term plan or in a middle term goal, I would say uh, I'm gonna learn Italian one day. Yeah, I think that's amazing. Rogelio, thank you so much for being here. It's been so fun to talk to you, to hear a bit of your journey, and to even know, like, you've come so far in your English since I first met you. You're doing amazing. Be sure to give my love to your family. I miss them. Yes, of course, Camille. Uh, thanks a lot for inviting me. I, I really enjoyed spending time with you on this video. And yeah, maybe you haven't you haven't talked so much in Spanish, but I know your Spanish is awesome too. Oh, thank you so much. I appreciate that. Uh, si te gustó el video, por favor, dale un like, 
suscríbete a mi canal y te veremos pronto. <risa> si te gustó el video, por favor, dale un like, suscríbete a mi canal y nos vemos pronto. Chao, chao.